Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is my February monthly roundup where I'm gonna be sharing all of my thoughts on everything that I tried this month, the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between. So without further ado, let's get started. So first up, I was gifted this Beauty Effect makeup case this month and I think it is amazing i've had my eye on this for a long time i've seen this i think on harrods it's stocked and and i've always been so curious about it so without trying to blind you this is a makeup case with a large mirror that has amazing like professional grade lighting for when you do your makeup i'll try and turn this on without it like causing a horrendous problem i don't think that, i think that's going to be fine you're not really going to see the power of the lights because obviously i have studio lighting here but this has adjustable lighting you can change it the brightness but you can also change the type of lighting from like sunlight to indoor lighting to natural daylight and then it also has a large compartment for all of your makeup so it's like a travel case with lighting <laughs> stay open so it's basically a makeup bag or a makeup case with amazing lighting i just think this is perfect for the majority of people who don't have a huge amount of space to do makeup you'll be able to keep all of your makeup in here as well as have you know a perfect large size mirror that stays up by itself and is also perfect for travel that you can take with you it's very solid feels very very luxurious and high quality and i absolutely love this this is going to be perfect for when i visit family because i always have to do like my makeup sat on the guest bed whenever i travel if i go and stay with my husband's family that's how i have to do my makeup and it's kind of hard you know holding up a compact or a mirror whilst you're trying to do makeup that is going to be absolutely perfect especially if you don't have good lighting in the room that you're in so i think that is amazing idea very very grateful to beauty effect for sending me that because <laughs> it's gonna get some use now next up i talked about this on my instagram this is the myzon niacinamide smoothing body lotion i hauled this from yes style so yes style do gift me gift vouchers for their website but i choose my own products to pick up from there and this was one of the choices that I made. I got this because I was looking for an exfoliating, a body exfoliating lotion. I had really bumpy arms in winter and summer, like the sun and just the fact that I'm not wearing long sleeves all the time sorts my skin out. But in winter, wearing a lot of long sleeves, my skin, like my arms just get really like lumpy and lumpy, is that the right word? Bumpy, they get a lot of bumps and just they feel rough and they just feel not the smoothest. So I was looking for like an exfoliating moisturizer and this was on yes style so i decided to pick it up let me tell you this stuff is miraculous i have used this maybe for a week maybe not even a week but every day for like four or five days and my arms are already perfectly smooth i keep on saying to my husband feel my arm feel, feel my arm that's how nice they feel I'm so happy with it. It was exactly what I wanted it to be. And it literally was a couple of days before it was very noticeable, the improvement. So if like me, you're suffering from lumpy winter arms, <laughs> give this a try another skincare item i want to talk to you about this month new to me was the kate somerville hydrocate recharging water cream it's a moisturizer despite all of that oh i have been loving this it's one of these where you push this down and it the product comes out of the little hole which i'm not gonna lie to you delights me every time it literally smells like fresh water from a natural spring on a mountain that's exactly the scent, okay? And no one can tell me otherwise. It's just the lightest, most hydrating moisturizer of life. It's very, very light. It has very sort of watery, not watery, not runny, you understand, but it literally feels like you've just splashed your face with water. Very, very fresh, hydrating, light feeling moisturizer. I have been loving this as my AM moisturizer, an absolute delight. And the scent just makes me, it wakes me up, you know. I'm like, 
boom, ready for the day after that. And the final, is it? Yes, don't doubt yourself. And the final non-makeup item this month that I want to talk to you about is Killian's Can't Stop Loving You fragrance. This is my fragrance of the month this month. Oh my God. Okay, so if you are familiar with Killian's Love, the original, this is definitely, I would consider this a flanker of love. So it's it's got the same vibe as Love. It's a very romantic, feminine, sweeter leaning fragrance, but it doesn't have the marshmallow. So my issue with Love, I appreciate it. I think it's gorgeous, but it is like headache inducingly sweet. It is so sweet. It's a little cloying. You certainly, well, I certainly could not wear that outside of like winter. It's, it's sickly sweet, sickeningly sweet. Okay. It's so sweet, 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 sweet. You understand it. It's too sweet for me. This fragrance has a lot of the same vibes, a lot of the same loveliness that love has, but without that marshmallow that just sends it into sweetness overdrive. It is just that hair dialed down. It's still a sweeter, more feminine, romantic fragrance, but I absolutely love it. I have been stopped three times since I've had this fragrance by strangers asking me what fragrance I wear. It's an absolute crowd-pleasing compliment bomb. The performance is amazing. And according to the strangers who, one of whom literally chased me around a shop to ask me what perfume I had and made me write it down for her, it leaves a glorious trail. Like the compliments I've had from this are that it's just so beautiful, but different. It's got that extra muskiness in there that doesn't make it just like, you know, any other gourmand fragrance. It has a little... Killian spice to it, you know, that makes it just that little bit more unique. I've been absolutely loving it. It's definitely a bit more of a like crowd pleasing fragrance than I typically go for, a bit more of a mainstream fragrance than I typically go for, but I don't mind that because it is just that little bit more different than I would say love is because it is, it just has those few interesting notes in there that mix things up, but I'm, I'm loving it. My husband loves it. It's one of his favorites. He always compliments me whenever I wear it. It's delightful. Okay. So on to the makeup. I feel like we've got such an exciting month this month of products like a lot of new stuff I've got a lot of products that aren't even well a lot I've got a few products that aren't even available in a lot of places yet and a lot of really hyped up products and I've got many opinions okay so buckle up first up let's talk about these Hermes products so I have two shades of the bronzer and one of the highlighters again if you missed my review of these it is already up on YouTube but these popped up on John Lewis for approximately 10 minutes and then sold out. They literally had like three or four in stock of each of the shades of these products and they sold out like in minutes. So I'm sure they will be back. Don't worry about it. I've heard that they are releasing next week. So keep your eyes out. I don't think, don't panic by them because I don't think once they're properly released, they'll sell out in minutes. I don't think they will. But I have two shades of the bronzer. Atlas is the shade that I have had since like Christmas and Cien is the shade that I ordered quickly when they popped up on John Lewis. This is shades two and four of five. I love this bronzer. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I don't think I have a perfect shade yet. I do wish I had bought three instead of four. I just wasn't sure how much different three was going to be from two. So I went to four and I kind of regret it. Not a hundred percent. And I haven't even seen shade three. So that might be incorrect, but shades two and four, I just feel like maybe three might be a little cooler. I don't know. I find four is a little dark for me in winter and two is a little light for me and a little warm for my preference. So I guess my hope was that three would be like the perfect sweet spot, but I have no evidence to support this. I'm just, it, it's just a hope I have, a hope and a dream. This is the softest, smoothest, lightest, most blendable bronzer. It does have the heavy Hermes fragrance. It is an insane 
price point. Whether or not you wish to spend this amount of money on a bronzer is a personal decision for you. But I have been absolutely loving it. Can't fault it. I don't have a perfect dream shade. That's the only slight thing that I wish was different. But I didn't get to swatch them and choose my shade in store. So if you do get that opportunity, I would highly recommend it because it's hard to choose online and I feel like the pictures are a little misleading but it is very light builds beautifully very very like the shade too I did not think this was going to work for me it looks almost the same color as my skin tone but with some building it absolutely does bronze me and I've really been enjoying it they're very natural they are very skin like in finish very very smoothing and perfecting and flawless on the skin and I really really enjoy them a lot of people asking me if it's like my holy grail bronzer I'm still not ready to commit to that yet I feel like if shade three is my perfect shade my perfect undertone it definitely could be but since I picked up the Gucci shade two which is the bronzer I'm wearing today and that is my perfect shade it's got some heavy competition, so I feel like I do kind of prefer the Gucci. Between the Victoria Beckham and the Hermes, they are literally neck and neck. If the, if this was a better shade for me, I would probably, Hermes would bump over the top, and it may even bump over the top of Gucci, but shade is important. As for the highlighter, it's not my favorite. It's definitely a bit too light for me and I just don't think there's anything wow factor about it. It's fine, it's a beautiful, very pretty, luminous, glowy highlighter. It's not chunky, it's not too sparkly, it doesn't enhance texture a lot, it is a more sort of subtle sh like formula but because the shade is so light as you can see on my hand it leaves a bit of a cast I have to be careful how I use it and I don't necessarily think that the other shade that was available is going to be much better because that did look very very warm and orangey as far as Hermes's images so I don't necessarily think that one would work any better I don't think these highlighters are really worth the money. They are so expensive, so much more expensive than any other highlighter I own, and there's, there definitely aren't better. In fact, there's many highlighters that I prefer to this one, and it's just, you know, it's such a huge highlighter. You're gonna waste so much of it never using it, whereas the bronzers, you know, you used a lot more bronzer than you use highlighter. So I feel like actually, because these are so large, it somewhat makes the price a little more easier to stomach just because you've got a huge amount of product for that price it's still insanely expensive don't get me wrong but at least it's going to last you for like two years if you use it every day so that's something some compensation next up let's talk about this dior lupine blush this is a limited edition shade of blush for spring i love this blush one of my favorites ever now this is a re-promoted blush shade number 468. It was previously part of the Birds of a Feather collection. I did post swatch comparisons between those two on my Instagram, but to me, they are obviously very similar, but this one is a little more pigmented and I also find it a little smoother as far as the shine and the glow that it has to it. It's just the perfect, slightly peachy leaning, neutral everyday blush. I absolutely love it. I love the finish. I love the shade. It's very easy to use. It's very inoffensive. It goes with every makeup look. I'm definitely using this more than I did the original 468 because the Birds of a Feather collection, it just didn't have as much pigmentation and it didn't have as much impact on my cheeks. I found I was building it forever and I couldn't use it at all in summer. Whereas this one, I absolutely will. It just has that bit more pigmentation without so much work and building. And I definitely find the finish to be smoother and more flattering and just buffs into the skin a bit more beautifully. There's just something a little better about this formula for me absolutely loving this blush. Now, speaking of blushes, we may as well continue this conversation along the blush lines and look at this beauty from Chanel. I think I got this at the weekend, so I've only had this a few days. This is the blush I have on today. Obviously, this is 
stunning to look at it's beautiful i don't usually like pink blushes i don't think i barely own any pink blushes like i was thinking of doing a video of this blush with like comparisons i don't have any comparisons to make okay because <laughs> i don't have any pink blushes i don't really like them they're just not my color it's not my cup of tea but this one i just had to have it because it just looks so beautiful and seeing the swatches and the finish of this blush oh good chainsaw steve is back I just had to have it because the finish just looked so stunning to me and I just love Chanel blushes. I think they're so gorgeous and they're always so beautiful. Oh, I just can't, I just can't get over it. Like the glow of that Chanel blush, come on. I mean, the Dior is a glowy blush. This is such a stunning sheen. I just live for it. Oh, it's so beautiful. It has the most finely milled sheen to it. There's no chunky glitter or sparkle. It is just a glowy goddess cheek. It is light on me. I did build this up like a fair amount today and still have like, you know, a subtle effect i just think this is beautiful and i'm gonna get a lot of joy out of this blush it's just a perfect spring color and yeah i think in the pan it looks very fuchsia but on the cheeks it's definitely a little sort of more coral just a little more wearable to me on what you know i am intimidated by pink blush but this for me is totally wearable and stunning my nose is really not detecting fragrance Maybe there's a little in there, but definitely not like the usual Chanel fragrance, you know, very shouty. The Dior, definitely fragrance, but again, lighter, lighter, more acceptable. No headache coming on just yet. Okay, next up, let's talk about this Gucci foundation, the new foundation from Gucci. I don't know why I felt the need to reword that, but... Let's move on. So I was given a sample of this foundation, a hefty sample, especially given that this foundation is so full coverage, it will cover your entire family with just one pump. I guarantee it, okay? Try, try it, give it a try. Wait, like literally just touched the lid. It is insane, the amount of coverage in this foundation is nuts. So I've used this foundation a few times since I had it. I had this very generous sample. I wanted to give it a good old try. Now, it's not my kind of foundation. It's not my cup of tea, but I can still appreciate the pros and cons, you know? It is matte. It is a matte foundation and it is a sort of soft matte, but it's still too matte for my preference. You know that I love a glowy, I'm a glowy girl. I love a glowy, luminous bit of foundation. This is not even like a satin or a natural finish. It definitely is a matte finish. It's not a completely flat, dry looking matte, but it is a matte finish. It's very smooth. It is very high coverage. Proceed with a lot of caution, I beg you. Like one drop, one pump is probably too much and use a sponge. So I use this with a damp sponge, tiny amount and work in sections because it dries down. It dries down and it isn't transferring. It's very, very good if you're looking for like a transfer resistant foundation, if you're looking for something matte, if you're looking for something very high coverage, full on, full beat, full glam, this is probably your girl. As far as wear time, this definitely gives me a solid eight hours, but it is starting to get a little shiny in some places. So I don't think this is a, like a forever bulletproof wear, like wear for three weeks type of situation, but it's gonna give you a solid work day on most people, I would, I would suggest that's my experience. It has an insane amount of fragrance, a very heavy fragrance, like definitely headache, inducing definitely like who oh, hits you right in the face while you're using it but once it's dried down you don't really notice it so for me i appreciated it i was happy with how my makeup looked on those days but it's just not it's just not for me you know that's that's my summary now another foundation there's much more is for me is this new Laura Mercier Weightless Perfecting Foundation. This was sent to me by one of my wonderful friends, my wonderful makeup world friends, Dora, over on Instagram. She gifted this to me to try and I love this foundation. It's beautiful, it's so flawless. This is the foundation I have on today. It is again one that isn't really my, like totally my 
typical preference when it comes to a foundation. It's a, a little lighter in coverage. I'm a, like an all or nothing girl. I either want to go for like a medium coverage and have all of my redness and discoloration completely evened out, or I'll go for like a completely sheer wash of something like the Chantecaille, Chantecaille Skin Tint or the Chanel Water Fresh Tint. Uh, that's kind of like my this or that. I, I never really go for like a light coverage foundation. If I'm doing foundation, I want like redness and everything to be evened out. This doesn't quite even out my redness, my skin tone, my discoloration. There is definitely still some unevenness to my skin tone, even with building this up. It's also what I would say is a natural finish. It's very flawless, as in the smooth texture of the skin. So natural, so skin-like, so undetectable, very lightweight, but it doesn't have sort of luminosity necessarily to it. It's like a, a slightly skin-like finish, a natural finish, I would say. But yes, a little too light coverage for me and not quite as glowy to be like my new favourite, but it looks beautiful. It looks very, very natural, very flattering on lines and texture for me. And I love how it makes my skin look and I can really appreciate it. Again, not the longest wearing. I've worn this like a few times since I had it. And I always find like by the eight hour mark, my forehead's getting a bit shinier and it's breaking down around the muzzle zone, around my chin and mouth, you know, the areas of your face that you move a lot. It's starting to break down and it basically starts to look a bit cakey. So I don't love that. So it's not like a top five foundation, but it's a really nice one. And I think if you like a little less or you need a little less coverage and you like something a little less glowy than me, that is probably going to be a real love for you. But I would like to know why they did away with my shade. I've been using 2W, I think, 2W1, something like that. I will write the right shade in the description box. But I used to use Tawny. Tawny is my Laura Mercier shade, my go-to. It's one of my best shade matches that I have across all brands. And it doesn't exist in this foundation. So I'm slightly furious about that. Laura. But moving on, let's talk about the NARS Orgasm Rising or whatever this collection is called, something to do with orgasms, no doubt. With the eyeshadow palette and the cheek palette. These are such great staples. I love these. I use these in my trying new makeup video and this eyeshadow palette is definitely going to get a lot of use from me. It's just a staple. You know, if you have a huge collection, is it anything you don't have? Probably not. But if you just want like everyday basics, it's perfect. It's giving you neutrals. It's got some like, you know, that's a pinkier shade. It's got some really pretty shimmers in there from very easy to use mattes. And every time I use it, I end up with a really pretty look that was easy and quick and that I'm really happy with and looks really pretty. I think it's a lovely little size. I love these nine pans from NARS. I really like that eyeshadow palette. And the blush palette is one of my favorites they've ever done. And I love these blush palettes. I really like this smaller, more condensed size because I feel like in the six pans, there's always one or two shades at least that you don't really use. So I love that this is a bit more condensed and cohesive and it's got kind of a shade for everybody. It's got like a lighter peachy shade. It's got a more pinky, vibrant shade. It's got a more neutral shade of their blushes and a really, really versatile highlighter that is beautiful on the skin. It's just the perfect little quad of blushes, you know, something for every makeup look and every mood. The formulas are absolutely gorgeous. As I said in my trying new makeup video when I used this, this is orgasm and I don't usually or haven't previously liked orgasm blush. I'm like the only person on the planet who doesn't like it. I found it too light for me and too sparkly and a little dry. This is like Nars's newer blush formula in the orgasm shade and it's just beautiful so smooth much smoother than original orgasm it's got more pigmentation to it it's not as chunky and it has that gorgeous like gel powder 
shine and smooth feeling to it. You know, again, like I said in my video, if you have six of these, you've probably got all of these blushes. This is Orgasm, Orgasm X, and I think this is a new shade, this one. Yes, this is Orgasm Rush. So I don't think you necessarily need this if you have six of their blush palettes already, but if you don't, this is an excellent one because it's a little smaller, easier to store, easier to travel with, but it's got everything you need and such beautiful formulas. Like NARS blush palette, you cannot go wrong, I promise. Next, let's talk about the new glosses from Lisa Eldridge. Obviously, these three are just new shades of her existing gloss formula. And then we have a new formula, which is Lisa's first sort of shimmery, sparkly gloss. These are so great. Lisa always nails her colours. Like, I've always loved this gloss formula. It's my favourite lip gloss. But these shades instantly sorcery became my favorite ever standalone neutral everyday gloss. It's got the perfect amount of pigmentation that you don't need a lipstick, but it's not intimidating. This is just living in my handbag. I'm using it all the time. These glosses are so like caring and kind on your lips. They don't dry out. They don't feel like you've had anything on at the end of the day. Lisa describes them as a, a hybrid between a gloss and a lip mask. And that's exactly how they feel. So comfortable, not sticky, perfect pigmentation. So you don't also need lipstick. I just absolutely love them. Rain is also one that is living in my handbag. Again, the perfect like everyday shade, just so wearable. I wasn't really thinking I would get Decade. This is the third of the sort of traditional glosses from Lisa and I didn't think I was going to pick this up and then I saw Lisa sort of wearing this very lightly and I thought oh yeah I need that and that's how I wear this very very lightly you know only applied to the bottom lip and then rub your lips together and it has the most beautiful rich very very pigmented gloss absolutely gorgeous and the new sparkle gloss as well I mean I will swatch this but you won't be able to see it because it is very hard to show this the beauty of this on camera but it is absolutely stunning I wore this over the top of the sorcery lipstick and liner um, recently and it just is so pretty it just gives your lips like such a beautiful sheen and just reflection to them such pretty glosses I already knew I loved them but these are like I think my favorite shades yet that Lisa has ever come out with certainly sorcery is my absolute favorite gloss ever I think why would you be chainsawing stuff today why of all days next let's talk about this Tom Ford concealer this I feel like is not a straightforward product for me I initially absolutely loved this the first time I used it and I still do don't get me wrong nothing has really changed I've had a couple of days where I've worn this concealer and I it hasn't quite worked and I don't really know what I've done differently to be honest with you or why on those couple of days it just didn't look how I wanted it to and I got a bit more creasing throughout the day on a couple of days. It's not like it doesn't work with products because I don't put anything else under my eyes. I don't bring my foundation under my eyes. I literally just wear concealer there. So what I think is happening is if you use too much of this, it will play you for a fool. It will leave you regretting your life decisions. You must use a tiny amount, a tiny amount, and it will look beautiful, very, very smooth and flawless and wear delightfully with no creasing. If you go a bit overboard and use a little too much, it things will go south. That's what I, that's my advice to you. That's my wholehearted belief. So with that, it has slight drawbacks because using a tiny amount, it doesn't quite have the coverage I want. It doesn't quite have the coverage of the Pat McGrath or the Dior with a tiny amount that those do. You know, you need a slightly bit more amount for this to get there with the coverage. And then you're gonna, you have the caveat of like, it's gonna start creasing and just looking a little heavier under the eye. So I think this will work for those of us who just want a tiny amount of coverage or just want to dab a little on with a finger. 
and then pop it in a handbag, perfect. If you want this like full beat, full coverage, full glam, I think there are better concealers out there where you can use a little less, it'll be a bit more flattering and you'll get the coverage quicker with less product. So yeah, this one is, it's, it's not without slight cons to the pros, but it is a beautiful concealer when used lightly. I love it and I'm still using it quite regularly. It's just that there are, a, sometimes we have some issues. So it hasn't quite toppled my Dior, Pat McGrath, Huda Beauty off of their pedestals. I think it's like, it's coming in maybe fourth. Next, let's talk about this new hypnotizing pop shot that I picked up from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the shade Pillow Talk Diamonds, one of the two new shades that Charlotte Tilbury released. Let me tell you, I'm so confused by this. I'm so confused by it because when I see swatches of it and anyone else swatches it, I think, oh, it's gorgeous. It's delightful. It's so beautiful. It's my perfect shade. Even now when I'm swatching it, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking it's so beautiful, but it doesn't suit me. It, it's really sad. It's the sad, harsh truth. It doesn't suit me. I don't know why. I don't love it on me. I think it just looks, I don't know what's happening because I'm looking at it now and I think it looks so beautiful, so pretty. Get it on my eyes right now. But the couple of times I've worn this, I just haven't loved how it looks. I think it, for some reason, it goes very like wishy-washy pink on me, on my skin tone, on my eyes. It just doesn't look like this on my eyes. I don't know why I wish I did, but it just looks very, very warm and I don't, I don't love the colour of it on me. I do like the formula of these pop shots. They're very pretty and light reflective and twinkly and I love the formula, but this shade was a little disappointing. I thought it was going to be like my perfect shade, but it's just, a, I don't know. It just doesn't suit me. And I couldn't be sadder about it because I thought it was going to be a delight. But I keep on using it because I, I feel like I'm just, I'm trying to make it change. Whatever's going on, I want it to stop. But so far, no joy. Next up, let's talk about the Westman Atelier Glit, Glit? No, Lit Up highlighter stick in Perla that I purchased. So this was like a limited edition or part of a limited edition set and now is a permanent standalone shade. Here it is here, hard to even see because it has no base. It has like, it's colorless. It's just glow. It's just dewy skin in a stick. The packaging is glorious, so beautiful so luxurious. I just absolutely love it. I think it's glorious. And this highlighter is stunning. If this was a powder, it would be the most glorious highlighter of all time. But you know that I am a powder preferring type of person. I've got definitely better with creams and liquids, but I still do prefer powders. And this one is very easy to work with by a cream standards. You know, you do have to be a little careful, tap it on gently with a fluffy brush. And I haven't had any issues with it picking up product, but I just prefer the process of a powder. But this is so beautiful. If you're looking for like a colorless highlighter, that's just gonna give you a very natural glow and luminosity to the skin without looking like you're wearing highlighter, this is gorgeous. But yes, I wish it was a powder because then it would be my holy grail by a million miles. This is like the cream version of Reb de Camellia from Chanel. That's what it's like. And now lastly, but by no means leastly, I want to talk about a highlighter that may well be my new holy grail. And it's this new highlighter from Galon. This is the Terracotta Luminizer in the shade 01 Warm Gold. And this has not been released here yet, again, I have friends in high places. Like when I say I know someone, I know and I know a guy. I don't mean someone who can kill you. I mean someone who can get you makeup before it's in the shops. <laughs> that is my superpower. And this again was very kindly sent to me by the wonderful Dora. And I swatched this and I was like, oh, you know, it's a beautiful highlighter, but it's not gonna be my shade, it's too dark. And it, you know, it looks very warm and very gold, but this is the highlighter I have on today. And let me tell you, it is perfect. It's so smooth. It's so 
beautiful, natural, flattering. It does not enhance texture and it melts into the skin. There is no cast. I don't know what happens between me swatching it like this and me applying it like this, but this works perfectly for my skin tone and it is really my kind of highlighter. This is just so natural and glowy. I've really built this up today and it's like still very, very natural and glowy and melted into the skin, even with me using a lot and really building it because I just wanted to be glowier today, but so perfect. I absolutely love this. I cannot wait for this to be released. I want more shades, even though this one actually works beautifully. I just want more because I think it's it's glorious, so beautiful. I've loved Galan highlighters before. They can do a highlighter beautifully. And this one is amazing. So there you have it. Those are all of the products that were new to me in the month of February and all of my comprehensive thoughts on how I've got on with them over the last few weeks. Please let me know what you've tried this month and what your favourite product is that you picked up in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye.